God bless you. God bless you. All right. God bless you. God bless you. Now, if you didn't bring someone, put up your hand. You didn't bring someone. Put up your hand. What's happening? What's up? If you brought someone with you, put up your hand. Okay? All right? So I've seen. Now, I want to see if you did not bring someone with you, put up your hand. You came alone. You, you came by yourself. You didn't bring anybody. Father, I pray that they will listen. Don't laugh. I'm praying for you. I pray that they will listen. I pray, God, that they will have encounters with people that need you. I pray, Father, that next Sunday, all of these people will come back with one person. In Jesus' name. Give them favor and breakthroughs and connections. In Jesus' name. Amen. Above all, help them to listen. <laughs> Praise God. I prayed for you. I have prayed for you. Let's clap our hands to the Lord. Jesus is here. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. How many of you uh, came here? Okay, let, let's raise our hands and, and pray for our transport system in this city. Uh, raise up your hand. I know that uh, the, 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 they are working so hard to fix our transport system. Let's just bless them that it will go quicker. That we'll have... It, it will not be difficult for us to travel. Thank you, Father, for the transport system, all the trains. We pray for everyone, the leaders of this city that are working so hard to fix all the platforms and all the trains. We bless them right now, and it will be easy for us to travel. And no delays in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I had some people complaining yesterday about our transport system. But, you know, you got to bless them. They are working so hard. You find them sweating in this heat. They are trying their best to fix everything that is um, not working. So let's bless them instead of complaining. Amen. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Praise God. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 9. 8, sorry. 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9. 2 Corinthians 8, verse 9. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, Yet, 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 for your sakes, he became poor, that ye through his poverty, through his poverty, might be what? Rich. Through his poverty, might become rich. He became poor, so that through his poverty, you all might become Rich. Okay, preach to your neighbor right now. Tell, tell them what the scripture says. Okay, let's read it again. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he, he, he became poor, that you, you, through his poverty might become rich. Preach to your neighbor now. Some people are not preaching well. Okay, re let's read again. Some of you are not preaching well. Let's read again. Let's read again. One, two, three, go. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. Now preach. Oh my God. Some people are not preaching well yet. Okay. One, two, three, go. One, two, three, go. Let's read again. Come on, face, face, face the screen. One, two, three, go. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you, through his poverty, might become rich. Hallelujah. Now preach to somebody. Y 
you understand? You understand? Ask them if they understand. Ask them if they understand. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, I, I want you to switch, okay? The person that was listening is now going to preach. One, two, three, go. Watch the screen. One, two, three, go. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. Now preach. Now preach. Come on, some preachers are here. Now preach. Now preach. Hallelujah. <laughs> Are they, are they understanding it? Okay, now you can pray for them and go home. <laughs> Praise God. Now listen to this. Jesus, the Bible says, Jesus became poor so that through his poverty, we might become rich. Now, I want us to put this in the right perspective. Jesus is so rich. Jesus is so rich. I'm saying Jesus is rich. This man is so rich. Now, Jesus never lost. He never lost. Are you, are you, are you with me? Jesus never lost anything. Jesus never filed for bankruptcy. But the Bible says... For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. Jesus never filed for bankruptcy. So he never lost anything. What happened is this. Jesus set aside whatever he had. Jesus abandoned his position. Jesus set aside. He never lost. He did not lose. He never, he never, he never, you know, it's not like he woke up one morning and everything had gone. Now Jesus is bankrupt and he decides to come on earth as a missionary. <laughs> no, he never lost. He set aside. Everyone says set aside. You want to say what that means? Setting aside, do you understand the meaning of abandoning something? It is like you have worked so hard for years and you have gained, obtained wealth. You have a good job, you, you, you have a nice house, you have everything and you've worked and earned everything. Okay, but you decide to abandon everything, to abandon, to, to set aside everything, and you go to the poorest community to live with poor people and minister to them, and you forget your wealth, your riches. You abandon everything, and you walk away from your riches. Jesus walked away. He never lost he never filed for bankruptcy in heaven and came on earth as a missionary. He walked away from what he had, what he obtained. He walked away from his position as God and he became human. He walked away from his position as king and he became a servant. Jesus was in timeless and he walked away from that glory and he came and submitted under time. Jesus left his position as God and he came and he was submitted under the law of distance, location, time. In other words, he became limited. He made himself limited. But listen, this was a strategy. And right now, whatever he abandoned you have obtained. Oh my God. Oh my God. Whatever he set aside, whatever he walked away from, whatever he abandoned, you have obtained. Come and raise your hands and give him all the praise and all the glory. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Are you with me? 
Do you understand the glory Jesus walked away from to come and live on earth as a human being, as a servant? But the truth is, whatever, everyone say whatever. Come on, say whatever he walked away from. Whatever he abandoned, I have obtained. Oh, speak like you mean it. Whatever he abandoned, I have obtained. Come on, clap your hands if you understood it. Oh, we're going to shout this again until it goes deep. You see, sometimes we got to get it from here to here. Whatever Jesus abandoned, I have obtained. Whatever he walked away from, I have obtained. So scripture says, though he was rich, he became poor. So that through his poverty, you become rich. So Jesus became poor by giving up his rights as God and king over all. Jesus abandoned heaven, a place where good things, every good thing come from that place he abandoned. He abandoned a place where every good thing comes from. He walked away from that place and he became a part of a people he became part of a people that live in a place where nothing good comes from. Can I say that again? He walked away from a place where every good thing comes from. And he became, he chose, everyone say he chose. He chose to become part of a people, to become part of a people that come from a place where nothing good, nothing good comes from. By choice, he walked away from that place where everything good comes from. And he became part of a people who come from a place where nothing good comes from. That is Jesus. So he became poor. But listen, let's go, to, let's go to John 1. Verse 45. We read up to vote 48. Are you with me? Okay, let's face the screen. One, two, three, go. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth. Now mark that. Jesus of? The son of Joseph. And Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Now mark that. Philip said to him, Come and see. Nathanael said to him, how do you know me? Sorry, let's go back. Let's go back. You jumped a verse, right? Yeah. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Behold, Philip, called you when you are under the fig tree. I saw you. I saw you now. Let's go back to verse, verse 45. Verse 45. Philip found nothing there and said to him, where have you found him? Of, uh, we have found him, Moses in law, and also the prophets wrote, wrote Jesus of Nazareth. So he became a Nazarene. He came from heaven and he went to Nazareth. Now let's go forward. And Nathan will say to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Can anything good 
Can anything good come out of that place? So Jesus leaves a place where everything good comes from. And in all places, he chose Nazareth. Now, according to this man, Nathanael, Nazareth is known for nothing good. And so he questions and says, if that man is coming from that village, that place there, he's good for nothing. But remember, this is a king of kings, the Lord of lords, who abandoned a place where everything good comes from. And he chose to live in a village, in a place where nothing good comes from. So this citizen, this Nathanael is asking and he says, can anything good? So Jesus becomes a citizen of a place that has nothing. Now why would Jesus, a son of God, a king, abandon his place of kingship, abandon his position as king, and he decides to live among the people, that have nothing good. And he also chose to become a citizen of a place where poor people live. Now poor people lived there. He became like them. Poor people have no respect. I don't care what you want to say. Poor people have no respect. Poor people have no voice. Poor people settle for anything because they are poor. So Jesus becomes poor. He was limited to human. He became part of human limitations. So he chose to be a citizen of a place where nothing comes from. Why would he choose to become part of that place where nothing comes from? Where no good thing comes from? Where sinners live, where poor people live, weak people live, abandoned people live, he became part of them, part of that place, became a citizen, a part of them. Why would a king do that? Let's go to Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2, verse 4 to verse 6. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us. Are you getting the message now? Okay, let's go forward. Next. Even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ by grace, you have been saved. Verse 6. And raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Are you getting it now? So he chooses to come and live where you lived. He came to your worst so he can take you to his best. He met you at your worst so he can take you to his best. So Jesus chooses to become a Nazarene, a place a citizen of Nazareth where nothing good comes from so that your big brother Jesus can come and pick you out of your poverty, pick you out of your disease, pick you out of your sins, pick you out of your pain, pick you out of your failure, rise you up from your dirt and take you to a place where he lives. Hey! He came to your village. He became a, Naz a Nazarene like you. Turn to your neighbor and say, I am no longer Nazarene. I am no longer Nazarene. I am no longer Nazarene. I'm a follower of Jesus. Those who follow him receive the light of life. He came to your village. He came to your sins. He came to your sickness. He came to your poverty. He picked you out of your dirt. And he raised you up to sit with him in the heavenly places. And he raised us. Woo! Come on somebody, he raised us up. And now, together with him, we sit in the heavenly places. We am no longer in my village. I am no longer. I am no longer. 
I don't know about you, but I'm no longer a citizen of that place. I am a citizen of another place. Oh, if you hear me shout, yay! Woo! I am no longer a citizen of that place. I was before. I am no longer. I sit in another place. I speak another language. I believe in something new. I am a new creation. He became poor, so I become rich. Woo! What was your village? Where did you live? I am no longer a citizen of Nazareth. A place where nothing good. Oh, they are about to see us. They are about to hear us. Because we have been raised from a place where we lived. We are in a new place. Oh, come on somebody stand up and dance a little bit. Oh, come on dance. Oh, come on, dance. Come on. Woo! Come on. Hey, I am no longer. Woo! Hey, hey. I don't know about you, but I'm no longer. I am sitting with him in the heavenly places. My big brother came and picked me up. Hey, when, when nobody wanted me, when nobody needed me, when nobody cared, my big brother showed up and said, Wilberforce, come with me. Come with me. Hey. <laughs> now listen, listen. I don't know where you're coming from. I don't know where you're born. But I know one thing. My big brother saw me. And he knew that I would never make it without him. And he said, my brother, Wilberforce, I am coming to a place where you are. He did not say, pick up your rags and come. Pick up, strengthen yourself and come. He knew that by grace I can make it. He says, I'm going to love you the way you are. I'm going to come to you and I'm going to lift you up. Come on, shout yeah! I was a Nazarene. I am no longer. Scripture declares that he became sin. Yet he did not sin. So that I can become the righteousness. Whatever he abandoned, you obtain. I said, whatever he abandoned, we have obtained. Nothing wrong, nothing broken, nothing missing. There is nothing broken in him. If there is nothing broken in Jesus, there is nothing broken in me. There is nothing dirty in him. If there is nothing, oh! As he is. As he is. As he is, as he is, so are we in this world. Somebody give a high five to your neighbor. I am no longer Nazarene. <laughs> Woo! I said I'm no longer my song has changed. My language has changed. I am rich. I am well. I am strong. I am healed. Ah!
<laughs> How are you doing? I am great. How are you feeling? Feeling great. My language has changed. Because I'm no longer a citizen of Nazareth. I am now a citizen of heaven. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Help me to preach to your neighbor. Preach to your neighbor now. Preach to him. Make them understand that they are no longer. Change how you think. Change your language. Change, 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 change. How are you doing? Ah, uh, I'm barely making it. Ah, uh, that is a language of people who are still living there. How are you doing? I'm struggling. That language is for people who are still living there. How are you doing? Man, this pain is killing me. Hey, you are no longer. <laughs> we don't talk like that. When you change citizenship, you change language, Right? Where I was born, they speak a language called Luganda. Where I live today, I can spend months without speaking Luganda. Because where I live, they don't speak Luganda. So how can you come from a place called Nazareth, where nothing is impossible? Huh? They speak that language. Nothing is impossible. Ah, no, 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 no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Where, where, where things are in... Where things are, you see that language left to me. I don't even, I forgot the language. You know where I'm living? I'm living in a place where they say nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Is impossible. Now, so I, I, forgot, I forgot the language. But anyway, in that place they say, what do they say? Huh? No, no, in the other place. Huh? Sorry? Nothing is impossible. Nothing is possible. Yeah, you see? Some of you remember the language. I, I forgot. I, I totally forgot. I totally forgot. <laughs> Woo! But anyway, that is the language they speak. So when we get born again, our big brother carries us out with him. And the Bible says, we are raised together. Raised together. He came for us. And now on his way back, he is raising us together with him. We change citizenship. We change mentality. We change the language. Nothing is. That is our language. How was your business? So dull. <laughs> I'm flying. I am, that's my language. I am flying. How are you doing? I'm great. What's your name? I am blessed. <laughs> Who's your friend? Favor. In other words, that, let me advise those of you that are about to get babies, right? Don't just speak names. Pick, pick, pick good names like Gracie, Grace, Favor, Amazing, <laughs> Wilberforce. <laughs> I'm telling you, my name, my name is working wonders. Every time I enter a place, everyone feels the force. They wonder how things begin to move. Now you, see, you need to know who you are. Every place I enter, people begin to wonder. There is something unique. Things are moving in a certain way. Hey, Weber first knows. Right? I know the grace of God upon me. Sometimes I keep quiet in a corner, but I'm like, I know. It's my name working. 
What's your name? <laughs> Actually, my name, Bezude, means people that have discovered who they are. You, you understand? So don't just speak names and give to your kids. Huh? Bezude. Yes. <laughs> Let's go back to scripture. Listen. Are you with me? Whew. Let's go Philippians 2, 5. We read up to verse 10. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. You, you understand? He made himself of no reputation. Even though he had reputation, he made himself of no reputation. Taking the form, taking the form of a bond servant, he took it on him. Right? And coming in the likeness of what? Of men. Verse 8. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself. He wasn't forced. He chose to humble himself and became obedient to the point. Obedience. Everyone say obedience. He became obedient to the point of death. Even the death of the cross. Therefore. Come on everyone say therefore. Therefore God also has highly exalted him. And given him the name which is above every name. Now watch that, watch that. Let's go to verse 10. Let's go to verse 10. Yeah. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on the earth and of those under the earth. Okay, verse 11. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. 12. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation. With fear and trembling. Now, the Bible is talking to us here to get the mind. To understand the working. To understand the position that Jesus has taken. But the most important thing here is to get the same mind of Jesus Christ. Turn to your neighbor and say, get the same mind. Get the same mind. Get the same mind. Now, he took a form of what? A born servant. Let's go to Revelation 1, 5. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over, the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Let's go forward. And has made us what? Kings and priests. To his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now what has happened? Jesus becomes a servant. He made himself of no reputation. He becomes a servant so that you can become a king. Oh, did you, did you get that? Jesus makes himself a servant so that you can become a king. Right now, your position is not a servant position. Your position is a kingly position. 
You have been raised to a position of kings because Jesus became a servant. As you lived in a place where you behaved and thought and worked and walked as a servant, Jesus came in that place and he did that same thing so that you can become like him. He left a position as king. He became like you so that you can become like him. Stand upon your feet and say, I am no longer a servant. I am a king. Say, I am no longer a servant. I am a king. Now listen to me. You have to step out of just saying it to be having it. You can no longer be a servant to money. You know, if I don't work on Sunday, my income goes low. You're still a servant. Christ has raised you to a place where you rule over money. Money doesn't rule you. You know people who don't give their tithe? They are servants to money. They think if I don't give my tithe, I won't pay my bills. You're still a servant. And yet you're made a king. Raise your hands and say, I am a king. Am a king. Shout and say, I am a king. Am a king. Shout and say, I am, I am a king. I am no longer a servant. Now begin to pray in the spirit. 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 Let this mind that was in Christ be in you. You are no longer a slave. You are no longer a slave, but a king. Raise your hands, speak in tongues. Pray in the spirit, 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 pray in the spirit. You are no longer a slave, but a king. You've been raised to be a king. He has made us kings. Kings. Thank you, Jesus. Now raise your hands, everybody, and shout, I am a king. I am a king. Shout and say, I am a king. I am a king. From this day, From this I'm going to think like one. I'm going to act like one. I'm going to talk like one. I'm going to behave like one. I am a king. I am a king. I am a king. No longer slave. No longer servant. I am a king. I've been raised. I have been lifted by Jesus Christ. Come and clap your hands to the Lord. Give him praise. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I look at kings. <laughs> I'm enjoying looking at the kings he has raised. When he says kings includes all of you, men and women, say, I am a king. Even females say, I am a king. The lion of Judah lives in me. There is no fear in me. I am a king. Now you got to change the way you talk, your attitude, begin to behave like one. At your place of work, you are a king, even over your boss. Spirit beings understand what I said. You are even a king over your boss. Because he said, every knee. Woo! I said, every knee. Every knee, including your boss's knees. Every tongue, including your... 
When they look at you, they will say, there is a king in you. You are king. When they see you, they will bow down before you because you are king. I said, every knee, financial knees, every knee in your life will bow down because you are a king. As he is so. Clap your hands to the Lord. Shout yes! Now we're gonna we're, 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 we're gonna praise God like kings. We're gonna give to Him like kings. You know, we're gonna switch our ties like kings. <laughs> Even your giving has to raise up to a giving of kings. Kings never give worried. You know, you understand what I'm saying? Kings, you you got to behave like one. Have you ever seen a king giving? You've never. I have seen kings give. Kings. I went to a king one day. And told him, Your Highness. He looked at me. And I said, I and my friends, we, we want to come and work in your kingdom. And, and work with you in your kingdom. And sensitize our people in the kingdom. He said, yes, what do you want? He didn't say, oh, thank you. No, he said, no, what do you want? I said, we want land. I thought he was going to give us like two acres, five acres. He said, okay. He said, I give you a hundred acres. I said, what? He says, is that what you want? You want land? He said, I said, yes. He said, I give you a hundred acres. We, we are going to prepare 38. When you finish it, we give you the rest. That's how kings give. Kings are not worried. Oh, if I give him a hundred acres, how much will I? No, he knows that. Listen, even what I give you is mine. <laughs> Including you. I'm giving your mind. You want to say what I'm saying? That's the mind is set. Oh, somebody is going to become rich. <laughs> Are you, are you hearing me? You're becoming rich. It's your mind is said, money, listen, you don't need, stop praying for money. You don't need to pray for money. Oh, Father, bless me with money. Ah, uh-uh. Speak to money. Money listens to the voice of kings. Money follows actions of kings. There are principles that govern money. Stop fasting and praying for money. Treat money like a king. You have a kingdom. Put money in the kingdom. Money will listen to you. Oh, I don't want to go there now. That's another day. But we're going to give like kings now. We're going to give our offerings, our tithe. There are three ways of giving. We are giving like kings now. We have a switch number right on the screen. Switch and put indicate CCI. We have a, a bank zero. Indicate CCI if you're giving from home. Um... You can also use your card at the information desk. You can give using your card. There's also uh, another way of giving. The ushers are coming to collect uh, if you have uh, cash. And we are giving like kings right now. Money listens. Stop praying for money. Stop fasting for money. Treat money like a king. Money listens. You are no longer in the village where nothing where nothing is working. <laughs> you are part of a, a family, a kingdom, a place where nothing is impossible. And I'm looking for a day where all of you will forget the former language. They ask you and say, I don't, I don't remember. I have a new language. Praise God. We are giving right now. Father, we are coming as kings. You have made us kings. We are not doing below. We are not going below. We are going above. Nothing will be done by us that is below standard. We are acting on our standard. We are acting like kings. We speak like kings. We give like kings. We believe like kings. We speak like kings, not as slaves. We've been raised. The standard is raised. That's who we are. As you are, so are we in this world. Amen. Let's give to the Lord right now. As you dance, praise God. Amen. Mm-hmm.